In this video, I'm going to go over the binary search algorithm in C. So the binary search algorithm allows us to find an element in a sorted array with a much quicker process than we could find an element in an unsorted array. So with an unsorted array, if we wanted to find the index of element 12, where is it in the array, basically? We'd probably have to search from the left-hand side to the right-hand side one element at a time, because really we have nothing to go on as to where 12 could be in this array. So we're kind of stuck searching one element at a time from the left-hand side to the right-hand side until we find 12. In the case of a sorted array, though, we could find the element with a much smarter process. So in the case of a sorted array, if we want to find the element 12, it probably wouldn't make sense to start at the leftmost element and go to the right. Because what we'd probably want to check first is the middle element. If we check that middle element and 12 is greater than that middle element, we know that 12 is not going to be on this left-hand portion of the array. We know it must be in this right portion of the array because the array is sorted. And if 12 is greater than 7, then we're going to have that it must be on this side of the array here. And we could continually apply this process. So we know that the element 12 must be on this side of the array now. We might as well just apply that process again and check the middle element. Here there's an even number of elements. There's six. So we'd probably have to pick between 10 or 11. It actually wouldn't really matter which one we choose, but we'd pick between 10 or 11 here. We'd say this is the middle element, and we'd say, is 12 greater than this middle element, or is it less than it? It's greater than that middle element. So now we know that we don't have to consider this portion of the array. We can only look at this portion of the array. And what's happening here is that each time we sort of examine a middle element in some portion of the array where we want to find the element we're looking for, we're basically having each time the amount of remaining elements we need to look at. Because like the first time we checked seven here, we were able to eliminate half the elements in the array and say, we don't have to consider these. It can't be in there. And then when we look at, you know, the remaining portion of the array here, we again have the elements that we need to look at because we looked at 10. We said, well, 12 must be in the right-hand portion because 12 is greater than 10. So we don't have to look at eight, nine, and 10. So again, we've wiped out half the elements. We don't have to look at these, and that's great. The less times we have to consider an element to see if that element is equal to 12, the faster it's gonna be in terms of the, the algorithm and how long it takes to run. So now we'd only be looking at these three elements, and we'd say, let's look at the middle element here. And in this case, the middle element is going to be 12 itself. And we'd say, we're done. We've found where 12 is in the array. And we only had to check three numbers. We only had to check seven, 10, and then we found 12. So a very, very fast algorithm, a very fast way of solving the problem compared to this process here where we had to check a bunch of elements here before we eventually found 12. And that's because a sorted array, it gives us some information to go on, to guide us, to find the element. So let's actually implement that process, which is called binary search. So we'll make a function here, int binary search, and the function is going to accept an array as an argument the element we're looking for, and it's going to have a left index and a right index. So we're going to use the left and right index to constrain the portion of the array that we're looking at when we call this function. And we're going to actually solve this problem recursively by having the binary, binary search function call itself with increasingly constrained portions of the array where we're going to be looking for that element. So the first time we call the function, it's actually going to look like this. We'll say binary search and we'll say try to find in the sorted array, we'll say the element 12, and the left index is gonna be zero, and the right index is gonna be 12. So the left and right index, they're gonna be the leftmost index that we wanna find 12 in potentially, and the rightmost index where we wanna find 12 in potentially. Because initially we wanna to try to find 12 in the entire array, and the leftmost index would be index zero, the rightmost index would be index 12, the last index in the array. Remember that arrays in C are zero indexed, so this 13th element here would actually be index 12. So that's what's going to happen the first time we call binary search, is we're going to call it basically trying to find this element in the entire array. But what we're going to do is we're going to continually examine the middle element in the array, and we're going to manipulate the left and right arguments to constrain the portion of the array in which we're trying to find the element. So let's actually first find the midpoint in the array. We'll say here int mid is equal to L plus R minus L divided by two. 
So this is going to give us the midpoint in the portion of the array that we're considering. So when we try to find the midpoint initially, it's going to be the actual middle of the array itself. But eventually the midpoint is going to be something that's potentially the midpoint of a portion of the array. Because like, let's say we're trying to find 12, right? Well, then we're not, we're not going to find it at seven. We're going to find that we have to look at this portion of the array. When we look at this portion of the array and we go to calculate the midpoint, we're going to want to look at the midpoint from the left index to the right index. So in this case, the midpoint is not the midpoint of the entire array. The midpoint is going to be the midpoint of where the left index is and the right index. And that midpoint is not just like the midpoint of the array itself. It's the midpoint of this portion of the array. So if this math here looks a little bit more complicated, that's what's going on. We're saying basically find the midpoint from that left index to the right index. So then the first thing we're gonna do is see if we found the element at the midpoint. So we'll say here, if the array at the midpoint is equal to the element we're trying to find, we found it. And we could say, return the midpoint because we found the element at the midpoint. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to do the trickier step where we actually constrain the portion of the array that we're gonna to continue to look at. So we're gonna say here else, if the array at the midpoint is greater than the element that we're trying to look for. So if the array at the midpoint is greater than the element we're trying to look for, then we know the element we're trying to look for must be in the left portion of the array. Because if we're trying to look for, let's say four, and at the midpoint here, we've got seven, we know it must be in the left-hand portion of the array. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna return the result of calling binary search with that left portion of the array. So we'll say binary search, return the result of calling binary search with the array, the element we wanna find, and we're gonna say here the left index and mid minus one. So what this is gonna do is it's going to basically keep the existing left index as the, the new left index when we call binary search again, but the right index, we're gonna change now, and we're gonna change it to be mid minus one. Because if we just checked, say, element seven here, and we just wanna to check to see, you know, where is four in this array here? Well, we check seven and we determine that, you know, four is less than seven. Then we just wanna check this portion of the array, right? So we're gonna keep the same left index, but we're gonna constrain now the right index. And we're gonna say, look at the index up until one to the left of the current mid, in mid index, right? So it's gonna be between there and there now that we're gonna be looking at. And that's what this does, is it sort of makes the new rightmost element we wanna consider one to the left of the current middle index, which makes sense, because if we just look at seven, we wanna go up to here, right? One to the left of the current middle index. And then the final case here is we're gonna say else, if, if it's this case, we know that the element is actually greater than the middle index. So else if the element is greater than the middle index, we're gonna consider the right-hand side of the array. So we'll say return binary search A, E, and we'll say here mid plus one R. So what we're doing this time is we're effectively altering the left index when we call binary search. And we're saying we wanna now look at the, the right-hand portion of the array, or the right-hand portion of this section of the array that we're looking at. And so here, mid plus one, if you consider this case here where we're looking at seven again, maybe we're trying to find 12, right? So we're trying to find 12, we're looking at seven. What we wanna look at is this element here as the new leftmost element, the element one to the right of the current midpoint. And that's what that would give us is the leftmost element to look at would be now one to the right of the current middle element. So that's gonna then cut up the problem for us like that continually looking at the left portion of the portion of the array we're looking at and the right portion of the current portion of the array we're looking at. Now, the one thing we've got to look for is it's possible that the element is just not in the array at all. So if the element is just not in the array at all, eventually what's going to happen is we would actually pass a left index that would actually be greater than the right index. That's what's gonna eventually happen if we continue to follow this process. We're gonna pass a left index into this 
function here that's going to be greater than the right index. If that ever happens, we know we're done and we know that we just can't find the element in the array. So if that's the case here, we'll say if the left index is greater than the right index, we know we're done, we just can't find it, and we're going to return negative 1. And negative 1 is going to be our special value to say that we just couldn't find it because negative 1 doesn't even make sense as an index, right? Indexes have to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on up. So if we return negative 1 as the index, we're basically saying we couldn't find it. So we'll try to call this function now, and we'll try to store the index. We'll say int index is equal to binary search, and we'll print it out. We'll say the index of 12, and we'll output that index. And in this case, the index of 12 should be 11 there. Again, because arrays in C are zero indexed. So we'll give this a run here, and we get the, the index of 12 is 11, and it's worked. We could give it another test here. We could say the index of, let's say, 3, and we'll try to find 3. And the index of 3 should be 2, right? Because 0, 1, 2. So we'll save this, give it a run, and we get that the index of 3 is 2. And it seems to be working. We give it one more test here. We could say what is the index of, we'll say, maybe 14. And we'll try to find 14. And in this case, we just shouldn't be able to find 14, and we should get back negative 1. So run this here, we get the index of 14 is negative 1. And so we've implemented the binary search algorithm in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.